This is Vicki coming to you from Upper Room Ministries, giving you a daily dose of spiritual oxygen. This is a juicy morsel that I have just been sitting here praying about. Um, I'm being hosted in a lovely home, which is why I wanted to show you the backdrop. Isn't that gorgeous? Here's the thing. Oftentimes, when we have conversations with other people about either a decision we've made or a decision we're going to make, have you found yourself holding back a little bit? The holding back is you fearing the judgment, fearing rejection, fearing shame, uh, fearing ridicule in some sense, and you hold back a little bit because you feel like, I'm going to make an excuse instead. I'll make an excuse to ask me to look just a tad better than what I think they think they're going to think about what I'm thinking. <laughs> Did you catch it? Oh my goodness. What an intellectual web. What a booby trap of the enemy. That's fear-based thinking. Someone asked me the other day in one of the comments, how do you get out of fear-based thinking? Well, First of all, you have to understand what got you into fear-based thinking. And the intellectual web that you go through, the fear of judgment, rejection, etc. And so, when you recognize that fear-based thinking, you choose the opposite, truth. Because, see, truth comes with a promise that sets the captives free. Now, just because you know truth doesn't mean you actually have to share it with another soul even if they ask you a question because you have the privilege and the right of free will to discern if they've actually earned the position of someone who you feel comfortable sharing information with. Now, I get throughout my daily life um, or through different relationships, uh, little doses of people shaming, blaming, um, judging, etc. That's just going to come with living. Okay. The point is this. How much weight, emotional weight, physical weight, do you give to someone else's broken judgment? That's on you. You do not need to give them that weight. You do not need to own what's not yours. You own what's true. He who is all-knowing knows what's true. So why make excuses? If you don't feel comfortable sharing something with someone, there's a language around that. Um, it depends upon the audience. So consider your audience. Consider your audience. Consider the soul. There's people who I've interacted with through the years who are not trustworthy. I know they're not trustworthy. And because uh, I hear something I've shared in the past that is brought up by someone else who would have known that information had the other person that I thought was trustworthy had that person not shared it with them. So I, I've learned, okay? So here's the dose discern the audience you're sharing with but you do not have to fear another soul the only person is the three persons in one that you need to be focused on and that's that language of love okay there's you don't need to make excuses for things you need to speak what's truth and state your integrity if you're not in the position of being able to do that then you need to either discern that I'm not going to share that. You can discern, let me sit with that for a bit, and I can get back with you. See that phrase? That's really good. Um, sit with that for a minute. Or you can change the subject because this soul isn't at the maturity level to be able to handle the rest of the conversation. That's a lot to ponder, but as you sit there, really it's simple, spiritual, nutritious bites. Truth is what matters. Integrity is what matters. The reason why we've made excuses moving on with other people is from our own trauma wounds of the past 
being shamed and blamed, ridiculed, hurt, judged, etc. Those no longer carry weight. You hear me? In the name of Jesus. The only thing that truly carries weight is maintaining your integrity, being with the one you love, our best friend, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. This can be done. Be gentle with yourself. Don't wear the shame sweater. Don't walk into each relationship wearing shame from the past when you're here in the present and can do what love requires. Amen? The ways in which to do this, you discern with the Holy Spirit. You work on hearing his voice. Follow his spiritual breadcrumbs. Look for confirmations and then fruit. I cannot tell you how free I am <laughs> living this way. Am I always doing it? No. Uh, I wish I would. Uh, but I've gotten stronger and stronger by exercising that spiritual muscle. You can too. This is your invitation to do what love requires in the moment. No need for excuses anymore. That's just baggage. It's like a backpack that is too heavy and you don't need to carry it. No wonder you're exhausted from time to time. Amen? When you move this out and make more room for presence, that's where the miracles occur. You'll be set free in many, many ways, cutting these strings of trauma from the past that seem to weigh you down in the present by choosing the language of love versus the language of fear. Amen? All right. No more excuses? You've got some language there? We can say, let me just sit with that, or I'll get back with you on that. Or you know what? I'm not comfortable answering that for right now, but I, when I am, or if I think about it a little bit more, I'll share that with you. Do you see there's language around this? Okay. But do consider your audience. Many of us are sharing things with people that don't actually earn, they haven't actually earned or deserve to hear our story because they break it into pieces and use it for their own devices sometimes. I know you've felt that before. So have I. The good news is we're not bound by that. Amen? God bless you.